What if season one, episode three, thoughts? Now, this episode is called What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes? Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by new rockstar, screen rant, nerdist, CBR, screen crush, black nerd, comedy, and IGN. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, although I don't mind to make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus show, MCU shows, including this one. Now, yeah, once again, the, the pacing of what if episodes continues to be really great. None of them really have slow sections that just kill the pacing. I like the, there are some good character moments as we see Fury and Romanoff drive up to Tony in the donut in Iron Man 2. And like, it feels like, oh yeah, good, good character moments in the entire episode, really. It feels like the kind of thing that could have, it, yeah, I, I saw someone point out, ah, possibly Nando, I think it was Nando V Movies, who pointed out that in this episode, the humor really felt like, or the, he might have said jokes, what felt like something out of one of these MCU movies from the 2010s, the early 2010s. And yeah, like hypothetically, if I just saw, if they had done it in live action and like released the one scene, you know, I would have thought, oh, deleted scene from the movie, I guess, you know. And I really like that Tony actually was poisoned. Like, I'm not glad that Tony Stark was poisoned. I'm glad that it's only a what-if episode. But I really, like, because when you watch the movie, like, the first time you watch the movie, and she just walks up and, you know, stabs something into his neck. And he says, you know, what did you just do to me? You know, it's like, <laughs> and it's, you know, Romanoff is not real. She, she doesn't have great bedside manner. You know, she's she's very very business, and she's not the biggest fan of Tony, so she doesn't mind that much if he's temporarily kind of scared by this. But the fact that this time it actually was poison that really is such a such a great and like Romanoff starts saying, you know, it's not a cure, but it will abate the symptoms. You know. But she's like, it's not a cure, but it will abate the symptoms. <laughs> like, the Hydra Stomper was indestructible right up until the moment it was destroyed. Okay, just the, the, yeah. And it's, it's such a clever, you know, instead of just attacking Tony, you know, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, if you're watching this video, hopefully you watch the entire episode, it turns out to be, Hank in a modified yellow jacket suit. So basically Hank knew that, you know, the, the, like if Hank just attacked, if, if Tony just collapsed, like if he fell off the donut and died or something, if, yeah, if he was stabbed with poison, fell off the donut and died, then it'd be like, well, what's going on? But instead, you know, a lot of S.H.I.E.L.D. people are like, I told you not to trust this girl. I, I, she worked for the Soviet Union. What did you think was going to happen if you gave her our badge? You know, so that, that was a really great, and, and it really puts her, what's, what's the term? It puts her on the, the back, back of her foot. Yeah, you know, she's, she's having to prove that she was innocent. She's having to find out who it actually was. Which was also a great, you know, that's why she needs the the password, which I will talk about later. And it was nice seeing Brock Rumlow, I think is his name, uh, again, although only very briefly. And I, I did like that, you know, Fury does still trust Romanov, you know, because, yeah, he, he he really does see that she's capable of doing good and 
devoted to the to, to shield and and the you know she's like she she's basically trying to convince him and he's like i believe you you know but shield has protocols so like you my hands are tied and she's like you know th these aren't going to hold me i'm counting on it and you know the the she 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 cracks a couple of jokes in in the car and she's like, mind holding these for me it's just i i i thought that joke was was fine enough the fact that the guy responds sure what that was a bit broad for my taste personally but you know and and some pointed out the the fight is similar to the fight between Steve and the you know, yeah Steve's elevator fight in Captain America the Winter Soldier now and and Crossbones is also kind of broad I you know I'm starting to wonder if this is because it's animated maybe they're having trouble playing these hard ass characters straight because it's animated and I'm I was if if that's how they were gonna play him I'm a little glad that he wasn't in that much of this episode it's just yeah but it's, and Fury and Hawkeye talking about Thor is another good scene really great hair sir he's gorgeous. Hold your fire. I can't figure out where he's going with this. And Hawkeye also loves his hair. And, you know, it was, it was so, so clever. Again, Hank is being so clever. He, let's see, did he, did he punch or kick or something? Hawkeye's finger. And of course that means he's going to let go. And he's sitting there afterwards like, this doesn't happen. I don't make mistakes. I've never accidentally slip, you know, my, my finger doesn't slip. That doesn't happen because he just can't wrap his head around, you know, and, and yeah, it's, it's such a clever, which also means that now they don't trust Hawkeye, which makes it really easy for Hank to, to poison him and yeah. Muscle Beach is a pretty great name for Thor. And yeah, when when they said that no one entered or leave le left, no one made like a tree and left. That doesn't work. Anyway, no one no one entered or left Hawkeye's cell, which made me think that it was maybe ghost. But then, yeah, I mean, even the you know in in the in the movie she was a shield. Assassin, which technically meant she was a Hydra assassin, but this is a what if, so she could be, but yeah, turns out to be Hank. Which I think made, you know, that, that had a stronger emotional impact than if it turned out to be Ghost. I like the character of Ghost in the MCU, but we don't have as strong of an emotional attachment to her. And they point out that Thor smells great even when he's rotting. That is definitely not Liv Tyler. It sounds like a iffy impersonation of Arwen. Like, her voice is way too high and soft. Like, I, I think at, for, for, like, a couple of seconds, I was like, did, did the voice actress stub her toe right before? <sighs> you know, there's, there's this sense of just, yeah, it's, it's too high and too soft. Uh, let's see what what was it that she said nah ne never mind I, I think we, you you get what I mean it's it sounded like the I I don't mind I don't mean to be like hard on the the voice act first voice acting is incredibly difficult I just guess I I, I kind of feel like maybe they should have found someone who sounds significantly more like Liv Tyler you know And, and, yeah, I, I like that Romanov, you know, she really wants revenge. She wants to avenge Barton. And, you know, she says, who do I have, to, who, yeah, who do I have to kill? Something like that. Who do I kill? And, yeah, you know, and, and someone pointed out that 
you know, that, that hits even stronger because we know, you know, in, in Endgame, she was literally willing to die to, to save, yeah, and, and it was also a great, that thing of, I think it was Fury who said that, you know, Barton had a family, he wouldn't have gone out without a fight, you know, he didn't, like, take a cyanide capsule, which I th think that's what they say, it, it, off, you know, at the start, it kind of looks like that, which I guess, do we know if Hank used cyanide, that would be clever, you know, I, I'm not sure Hawkeye had a cyanide capsule in the movies, but, like, it would make sense that, you know, and, and like, someone would think, oh, he, what, what's the term, fell on his sword, like, he, he, he did the honorable thing, and, you know, committed suicide, because of, yeah, anyway, and, you know, move or I'll make you move, which is, is, you know, very, very similar to what she was told by, uh, which Dora Milaje was it that was in Civil War? I'm afraid I'm having trouble remembering the, Ayo, right? Who was also in Captain America and the Winter Soldier. I, I've, <clears throat> I think it was uh, her. And we see the Watcher's silhouette in the desert. And I think there's at least one other shot where he's clearly visible. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's very clearly visible to us, the, the audience watching the show on Disney+. Plus. I guess it's probably not as obvious to the characters in the episode that he likes to watch. And Loki attacks with the Asgardians, and and I like, you know, do they, are they from Earth? Maybe Middle Earth. And Tom Hiddleston's voice performance is excellent. And Loki's great speech gets interrupted as usual. That is, yeah, and and the, he's like. Are you going to answer that? I'm trying to do a thing here. And and the, you know, Fury does answer it. And I'm kind of in the middle of something here. We'll start a support group. I've got General Ross and several tanks. I've got an alien army. Show off. Yeah, but what he was showing off was dope as F. Oh, the hell opened fire. To be fair, someone jumped the gun in the movie, too. I, I don't think someone shot before they were supposed to, but the, the you know, other than, like, was it, was it, ah, Emil Blonsky, was it maybe him in the, in the bottling plant? I, I forget, but anyway, in the movie, like, someone, someone was spotted at the, at the, uh, university campus, yeah. Great intercutting between the Incredible Hulk and Thor 1 scenes. Cool, pun not intended, to see the casket of ancient winters in action. It's been a while. And, you know, some, someone pointed out, by this point in the first Thor movie, Loki had realized that he was actually a frost giant and could wield the, the casket. Although, I mean... I guess the the other Asgardian the the Asgardians there do they just are they just fine with this or do they not know that only or wait is it that only frost giants can use yeah I don't think we see Odin use it Odin picks it up and puts it in the in the place but yeah yeah the the see. Yeah, and, and it was a fun... Yeah, yeah. Loki uses it against some shield Humvees, which in the in the actual movie, it was the Destroyer using the, the face blast against that. So it's, a, it's a, again, a fun alternative. Hulk bloated. Hulk go boom! What hurt Hulk? That, that was another really clever, you know, he like, he went in his ear, Hank went in his ear, and then threw one of the, the 
blue circle things, the the embiggening chakras. Wait, no, is that what it's called? Anyway, I know it's not what it's called in the MCU. I'm I'm trying to make a pop culture reference, but my mind is blanking. Anyway, you know the the yeah he throws one of those onto Hulk's heart, and since it's when his heart like when when his heart beats faster you know once it once it goes past a certain uh what what it, what are they called again beats per minute i think once it gets to a certain beats per minute he starts turning into the hulk so if you make his heart expand greatly his his hulk form would also expand greatly and yeah like eventually like if if your heart keeps yeah eventually you 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 would hypothetically blow up you know wouldn't it wouldn't look quite like that but it is science fiction so that again such a clever way and and someone pointed out given that it's you know the 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 thing we know can't hurt hulk is when something comes from the outside or if banner himself tries you know he he tried to shoot himself but Hulk knew that he was trying to shoot him, and so he turned in, you know, be before it, yeah. The, the, but yeah, like, if you, if you were already inside of his body, and you made his heart, and like, why would his heart be, like, immune to beating faster, that, you know, I, I mean, at most you could say, oh, maybe there should, maybe there would be, like, a limit to how fast his heart could beat, but we're talking about the Hulk. Like, he survived, you know, in, in some incarnations, he survived floating through space temporarily. You know, that's kind of a... That doesn't really... The human body cannot survive even extremely brief exposure. Like, like, ah, uh, wait, did I read somewhere? that Like, you'd, it would have to be just for, like, was it three seconds, seven seconds or something? It's, it, and, and he floated there for a while. I forget. I, I, I read it in a comic and it's been years. It, uh, it's been decades. It's probably been 20 years, 20 years since, since I last read it. So a little, a little hazy on the details, but yeah, it, it really made, made perfect sense as a way for the, yeah. And let's see. And and Sif says they should listen to Fury and points out the All Father would want us to. What was it she said? Would want us to listen or or something like that. And yeah, I mean, he's a conqueror for sure. But he does like if if the other side offers an arrangement, Odin isn't going to be like, no, screw you, and still attack. You know. And Loki might not want to make an arrangement, but Sif is right there. Like even if and, and the and the actually I think all let me think. Is Sif one of the Warriors? No, no, Sif it's Sif and the Warriors three, right? Because the Warriors three are Hogan, Volstag, and the guy who used to be played by that, yeah, he, he, at first he was played by one actor, later he was played by the Shazam, Shazam actor, I forget his name, but yeah, those are the Warriors, so yeah, Sif and the Warriors 3 are right there, like, even if, like, maybe, maybe you want to say, oh, well, you know, the Asgardian army, they are loyal to their king, they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna tell anyone else that Loki did something very un Odin like, you know, very, very soon after he took the 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 throne even temporarily, but yeah, and and Sif is you know, we've seen her be very like she's the the voice of reason is the the thing I'm getting. Yeah. You have until the next rise of Midgard's sun to deliver my brother's assassin. Or I will reduce this planet to ash and ice. And yeah, that was that was an excellent line. And and it's great because the you know he he looks to the side and we see the sun 
uh, set. We see the, yeah, the setting sun, which is also, you can do that in animation. It would, it would look really wonky if you tried to do that with CG in live action. And, you know, Colson at first is like, I'm not, I'm not giving you my password. And Romanoff is like, look, it's the only way for me to access the database. There's no other way for us to find out this, you know. And, and Colson relents, and his code is apparently Steve Steve, I heart Steve, seven, was it 0704, so, something like that, which, you know, someone pointed out that, you know, we find out in the first Avenger, Steve is literally the, the, ah, what's the word? He is the, he is so patriotic, he was actually born on the 4th of July, which, you know, seven for Americans do that silly thing where they, say the month before the day which anyway other languages you know other other countries have silly things like that anyway and yeah you know Romanov on the phone says it's all it's all about hope and Fury gets out the Captain Marvel beeper and Let's see. Yeah, and and you know, the 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 episode is Fury's big week. You know, it's it's the I forget when they when it was revealed, but the 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 people behind the MCU reveal that Iron Man two, The Incredible Hulk, and the First Avenger, and Thor. There it is you know, took place, uh, not, not the first Avenger, the end scene of the, you know, Steve being found and thought out, you know, all took place over the course of this one week. And, you know, he, he was discovered and thought out at the end of that week. That's why he's not mentioned in one of the others as being, you know, yeah. You got a name, soldier? Sorry, face furnace door was closed. What were you yammering on about? But but yeah, it's it's so clever. You know, once Fury knows, he goes and makes a deal with Loki. And we only realize afterwards what the the deal you know is, but yeah. And Loki Fury is standing over Hope's grave and Hank walks up. V very clever as uh, you know hope was a shield agent and she died near odessa which were the the was it odessa eastern europe i forget exactly it, is it russia anyway odessa and someone pointed out that you know th th there's depending on who you listen to of the Easter egg, you know, the, the various YouTube channels, some people think that it, that it means that this was the mission that, you know, Romanoff mentions being on in, you know, where she encountered the Winter Soldier in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. But since that mission was her, like, she she was transporting a person of interest. Now in the in the movie, uh, let's see, was it a science nuclear scientist? I forget. But the the yeah you know maybe in this episode it was actually Hope that was the person of interest. You know yeah yeah either Hope was the person of interest or Hope did the mission instead of Romanov. Either way. She was killed there, and yeah, I really like the the brief bit of us seeing how Hank killed the various Avengers, and Fury, Loki Fury gets Hank to confess to everything. You know, I the moment that he started saying. So you kill this, this, and this, you know, I was like, oh, he's getting a confession, you know. And I thought he was going to, like, record it on, like, a little, you know, press the thing and it 
records voice. It records noises, but people use it for voice. And you know, then then I realized, oh, it's it's Loki in disguise. And yeah, you know, once you see Fury able to fight Hank, it okay, that's Loki. That's definitely not. And let's see. And and I liked seeing Hank using the the lasers. And Loki pulls the his signature move of making hologram versions of himself, and then turns back into himself. <clears throat> now, let's see. and and you know, Hank goes, "What's with the goth kid?" Hello, trickster god. And I I really like that Loki, you know, took, yeah, you know, yeah, Loki takes over Earth and. I, I saw one one person on YouTube say, well, you know, at this point in Thor, he was just trying to impress Odin. He he didn't want to conquer Earth, yet that was after Odin made it clear that it wasn't going to be, you know, yeah. I, f I forget if that same person then went on to say, but maybe it was just too, you know, too much of a, what's it called? He, he couldn't pass up the opportunity. I think that was based... I mean... Odin himself was a conqueror. We, we... You know, that's made completely clear in Thor Ragnarok. I always thought that... It's... You know, they, they drop... <clears throat> they do drop hints in the first two movies, but the third movie makes it explicit. He was an imperialist. You know... The sun will never set on the nine realms. And yeah, you know, he taught Loki, you know, even, even as a child, he, you know, Lo Loki and Thor are told, you know, are, are taught that, you know, conquering. I mean, I mean, okay, so Odin says, what is it? A wise king never seeks out war, but he must always be prepared for it. Besides, Loki already had the troops there, you know. And he does consider Earth a, you know, in inferior to, to Asgard. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, Loki at the United Nations, speaking to the world, giving the speech that he gave in the first Avengers movie, since without the Avengers, he conquered Earth using Asgardian troops, which also, and I think this might be because Asgardians are not coded as other or foreign you know, the Asgardian troops, as far as we've seen, are much more well-organized and capable, where the, you know, when, when we see the the Chitauri in the MCU movies, usually they're kind of, they're just, they're going all over the place, they're really destructive, they don't seem to have a clear, like, yeah, you know, Thor points out to Loki near the end of the first Avengers, this is just chaos, you know. Do, do you think this chaos ends with your rule? No. And, yeah, Fury does find Steve and Captain Marvel shows up. I, I like the welcome back Captain. And at first we think, oh, you know, Captain America. But no, he's, he's talking to her. And, you know, she shows up and, like, tightens the glove. Isn't that, like, was that a cover or just a panel? I, for, I forget. But I think that's from the comics. Seeing her pull the, the glove on, you know. So where's the fight? And the, you know, in, in Endgame, in the post credit scenes, she said, where's Fury? Endgame. In her solo movies, obviously it wasn't the, it, it was a scene in Endgame that we saw as a post credit scene. Yeah. You know, she said, where's Fury? But here, she, you know, he's right in front of her, so she knows. So now it's just, so where, you know, where's the fight? <clears throat> now, she very nearly took out Thanos with a complete Infinity Gauntlet single-handed. <clears throat> so she could easily take out Loki single-handed as well. However, she can't be everywhere at once. And he already has troops, like, in a bunch of different places. So I figure, like, I, I think there's a chance we'll get, you know, this... Some, someone pointed out all three episodes end on a cliffhanger, you know. 
there's some chance that we'll see a follow-up to this episode or more from the universe of this episode in a later what if or somewhere else down the line and i think there's a you know loki is very devious so i think what would very likely happen is that you know she would I, I don't think she would like try to kill loki outright she would try to get him to surrender and he would say in that you could kill me right now but in the time that it would take you to fly all over the world and stop all of my troops how many human beings do you think my troops would be able to to kill before you know and it, it it's the trolley problem which i think would make her like i i figure she would wait until they had more forces and you know by the end of this episode they have two captains but the the and and i mean i suppose it's possible they could organize a certain amount of shield or yeah so i mean i mean if if ah, what's the word given that fury was able to organize some shield people after the fall of shield you know yeah he's he's got he's got some backup plan but yeah Now I I want to very briefly talk about like you know some some there's this I forget if it's a theory or if it I, I forget if it's only a theory or if it has been confirmed that there are that there is going to be a Guardians of the Multiverse coming up you know obviously if that happens you know the the yeah again I forget if it's a theory or if it has been confirmed but. Certainly what seems likely is that they would take at least one character from each of the, you know, Captain Carter is a really, really obvious, you know, so you've got Captain Carter, there's a bunch of different ones they could take from episode two. I guess, I mean, Thanos on your side, that's a pretty big, you know, or they could go for uh, T'Challa's Star-Lord since he's like... He's an incredibly capable leader and fighter. So, and from this episode, I mean, I guess it. Yeah, from from this episode, it would basically have to be one of the two captains, or possibly a reformed Sif or member of the Warriors Three or something. But yeah. Now, looking at the end credits. That was not Scarlett Johansson as Romanoff. I personally think she did a pretty good job sounding like her. You know, some some people really didn't think so. I think was the actress's name Lake Bell. Is she related to Kristen Bell? Any, anyway, and not a big surprise that Tony Stark, Betty Ross, General Ross, and Carol Danvers were not voiced by the MCU stars. That's yeah. I don't know, I, I saw at least one person say, you know, oh, but he sounds like Tony Stark. He sounds like Tony Stark, but he doesn't sound like Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark. Anyway, let's see, and, and I, I don't blame them. I, uh, you know, like, contract-wise, I could imagine that, like, I mean, these are, these are, they have headlined some of these movies. I'm sure that even if, the, like, like, Tony doesn't even have very many lines in this, but I could still imagine that that might be like a super expensive, you know, Robert Downey Jr. And, and like some of the, like, like Chris Evans apparently is not coming back to the MCU after Endgame. And what was it with Robert Downey Jr.? He said he was open to it, but then... I mean, he didn't show up in Black Widow, even though that had... I, was that even a rumor? I think that had been confirmed. But then they did have to finish the movie without, like, crowd shots that hadn't already been filmed due to Corona rules. So maybe that's where his appearance was. Maybe he showed up to talk Ross out of taking Romanoff. Maybe that's supposed to be 
the idea. Anyway, and I could imagine. I mean, General Ross, he's made smaller appearances before. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he is still too expensive, or maybe he didn't feel like it. I don't know. And the. I mean, I don't know if we're going to see Liv Tyler again in the MCU. I, I, I mean, I don't know her feelings on the matter, but like, I know some actors, like, if one actor is fired, you know, some actors will be like, well, if you're going to fire them, fine. I don't, I don't work for you anymore either. And like, depending on who you ask, there's different explanations for why Edward Norton is only in The Incredible Hulk, did not play Banner or Hulk after that, but he is definitely not happy with the MCU. He's not coming back. So I could understand why Liv Tyler might be like, I'm not going to, like, yeah. You know, I mean, Ruffalo did voice. I'm almost 100% sure. Ruffalo did voice, you know, Banner and Hulk, if Hulk made any. Yeah, I think he might have let out, like, a, a noise when he exploded, which was also, like, holy crap, body horror in the MCU, that's a, it's, it's not the very first time. I'm not saying it's the very first time there's body horror, and certainly not with, with Hulk's character, but they had him explode. He was, he was the titular character of the first movie, the, the first MCU movie that he's in, and they blew him up. Those maniacs, it's, it's, wild and and like someone pointed out you know it's i'm i'm guessing pg13 or something like that so they couldn't have like goo or body parts flying out so that's why it's just like mist but it's still they still blew up the hulk like that's that is dark now let's see and it, right one theory says that hank was killing avengers because of pierce pierce knew he couldn't control the Avengers, so he wanted them gone, which, yeah, could be. And, like, for, for those who might not know, in the comics, Hank was Yellow Jacket. You know, I let's see if I can recall. Darren Cross was a villain, but he wasn't Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket was one of Hank's identities, and he, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing in the in the comics in some ways this episode is the biggest divergence of these three you know this is like some some people have said you know the the previous two were just what if character x was actually character y which is technically true in the ca case of captain carter i wouldn't really say that that's all episode two was but that is where it starts but this is completely different from so yeah and I, yeah, I forget if I mentioned, but I thought that, I'm, is, is this the first voiceover work Michael Douglas does? He has been in movies for, for decades now, so I guess it's possible that somewhere along the line he did some, some voice work. I thought his performance was excellent. Like, he did a really good job. And, and there is that, like, you know, they, they gave him, like, these really crazy eyes there's room for this Hank losing it and going on a killing spree like this. You know, like, if if they had done it with, like, Steve Rogers, I would have been like, okay, you really have to, like, okay, what made that happen? There's You really need to push his character to get him there. But Hank, like, when he found out that they were, like, trying to recreate his formula... You know, they were trying to go back to formula. Oh, okay, so the guy, I think the guy also insulted him. But he, like, punches him right in the face. D didn't he, like, have a nosebleed afterwards? Like, you know, because of an insult. So, yeah, if he loses hope, like, that was, you know, a hopeless Hank. I I buy it. I buy that he would go on, on this killing. I, and, and that's, again... I saw at least one person say, I don't really, that, that's, no, you, he, he wouldn't do that. And I don't know. I, I thought it was like, I am, I am, when, when I feel like a character has been betrayed, I, I let you know, I don't hold back on that.
but I really don't feel like they they did. I I I thought it made sense that he would do that. Yeah, I, let's see. I saw one person say, "Why would he go after the Avengers? Why wouldn't he just like go directly for Fury?" Well, he wanted like he's he's basically trying to do to Fury what Fury did to him. You took away the person who meant the most to me. I'm going to do that to you. And I don't know if to Fury that is the Avengers, but certainly, you know, that that is a, a logical guess. You know, that he's he's not, you know, Hank doesn't know about Goose. So, so the, actually, I suppose, Hank, I suppose Fury might not be the biggest fan of Goose after the whole scratching. Anyway. Let's see. You know, that's that's the thing with some cats. You scratch its back, it scratches your eye out. That is such a great, like, because cause a lot of people, I don't know that very many people actually know of a at least one case where an actual cat scratch someone's eyes out. I guess, I guess possibly if it's not tame, if it's like feral or something. But a lot of cat owners have said that when their cat like swipes at them, it's like, are you trying to scratch my eye out? So, you know, a florican would. Now, let's see. So, yeah, in the movies, Loki wasn't at the... St and, yeah, I already... Did say, yeah, his father was a conqueror, or adoptive father, anyway. That's why he's conquering, even though, at that point, in, you know... And it, it was clever, like... At that point, in th when, when... When Thor tries to lift Mjolnir... Let's see... Is that is that after Odin has gone into the Odin sleep, or is it right before? It's it's close, you know. Like like you'd have a problem. Like let's hypothetically say that Thor died when he fell to to yeah, right after, right at the start of his first solo movie, and then Loki comes down and be like. I mean, I guess maybe Loki did something to Odin, but otherwise it would be Odin, you know. But yeah, like at this time in in the yeah, cer certainly when Loki, because Loki doesn't come immediately, you know. I've, I'm not 100% certain how much time passes, but yeah, you know. So so yeah, certainly by then Loki would have taken the the throne, and for like the the let's see. You know, again, you have the issue of, well, in the movie, Sif and the Warrior 3 did, like, object to that. But if Thor was dead, then he really would be the only, you know, what, what are they going to do? Just have no king while Odin is in Odin's sleep? So, so, yeah. And if Loki, like, when Loki tells them we are going to Earth, because we're going to get revenge for the death of Thor, the Warrior 3 and Sif would 100% be down with it. Like, they'd be, you know, to to avenge Thor, I would ride with the devil himself. But yeah, this is definitely the, the darkest episode of the three. You know, the, the, first, the first two were not all that dark. Like, I, I saw some people say, you know, if, if T'Challa is Star-Lord... Like Peter Quill is Star Lord. That's a that there's tragedy to that story. Which, I mean, for for years he thinks that his that all of his people are dead. I I feel like that's tragedy. But then by the end of the episode he does go back and and spend time with his family. So it's not. But anyway, this like yeah. By by this point we've we've had some some fun episodes. Now we're we're ready for something really dark. Like, if this had been the first episode, I think the show would have lost some people. Some people would have been like, if this is it, count me out. This is too much. This is just not okay, you know. But yeah, this is literally a serial killer story. 
This is some of the darkest we've seen in the MCU up to this point. And yeah, the, the, let's see. I, and I, now, yeah, now th thinking more about it, maybe the reason that these episodes have some really broad comedic performances was so that the darkness of this episode would not completely overwhelm the audience. You know, a lot of the MCU movies will have jokes, like, very often, like, right after. Like, really dramatic moments, really darkly intense moments, which actually, I, I recently got to thinking about, you know, some people say that that's a really terrible aspect of the MCU, and I do think, I definitely thought that there were, you know, Alexei in Black Widow dial it down by maybe 20%. He does, not everything about him needs to be funny and ridiculous. But if you actually, like, it's been a while since I sat down and watched them, so I, I was just thinking back to them. The first phase really wasn't that bad with that. They let a lot of these moments sit. You know, like, right after, right after Thor realizes he can't lift the hammer, you know, if it had, if that movie had come out, like, several years later, in, in phase two or three, there would have been a, like, you know, it, you know, cut, cut to Coulson, and, you know, he would crack some joke, but no, if you actually watch it, yeah, he, the, the moment hits, he doesn't say anything funny, it, if anything, it compounds the sadness of it, because he's like, grab him, or something, I forget the exact line, but, and then they do, and Thor is is in this cell, and he thinks he'll never go back to Asgard. He thinks that he's stuck on Earth forever, and imprisoned, and yeah, you know. So, <clears throat> I, I saw someone point out that it was basically the first Avengers movie was when the idea of having jokes right after dramatic moments and intent dark moments and such yeah, that was where that started, and Joss Whedon could pull that off, he did well in, in the two Avengers movies he made, but some of the other, you know, a, a number of the other movies, if I'm perfectly 100% honest about it, a number of the other movies, they, they, what they, they understand that sometimes after a dramatic moment or a dark, intense moment, you have a joke, but they don't understand that you still, like, they, they overdo it, you know, they're, they're too eager to have jokes, which is also, you know, if you go back and you actually watch, you know, in, in the two Joss Whedon event, like, when, when, when Romanoff says, do you, you still think you're you're the only monster on the team that moment hits you know there's not a there's not a joke immediately after now let's see the yeah that is right i yeah someone pointed out that the episode is actually very very like it's it's kind of a tribute to 7 you know the david fincher thriller or horror thriller seven with you know it it marks the different days and the yeah the the way that they're gradually discovering all these dead people although we see them die when in yeah it's not a spoiler to, to say that at least yeah at, in seven at least some of the victims are discovered excuse me are discovered after they're already dead I guess yeah okay so spoiler for seven until you see me lower my index finger so if you don't want seven spoiled mute and skip until you see me lower my index finger in seven it also turns out to be not not really a vendetta as such but he's trying to send a message you know and at the very end like he gets, you know, the, the, yeah, in seven, I f actually, I forget, did Hank die at the end of this? 
I forget. Anyway, John Doe ends up dying. Hank ends up getting stopped. But they did kind of win. You know, John Doe managed, you know, he was the seventh. But, yeah, seven people died according to the seven deadly sins. And, you know, I've, <clears throat> I forget Brad Pitt's character's name, but he's going to prison. He killed an unarmed man who had no means of attacking them, you know. So, so it, you know, it wasn't cold-blooded murder, but, like, if he's... Anyway, yeah. And in this, you know, Hank wanted to take away the Avengers. He wanted to take away, like, <clears throat> I don't know if love is probably not the word. Hank loved hope. Fury doesn't love the Avengers, but he feels a strong need for the Avengers. You know, he says in the first Avengers movie, we need a response team. And, yeah, you know, he took Hank, Fury... To Hank, Fury took away the one living person that he loved. You know, he doesn't know that uh, Janet is still alive in the Quantum Realm. And so he takes away the thing that Fury needs the most. And he succeeded, you know. I, I don't know if he was like enough of a nihilist that he hoped that Earth would be taken over. But... I mean, on some level, he must have realized that's what, you know, that's why Fury feels that he needs the Avengers. So, yeah. Anyway, no more spoilers for Seven. Yeah, absolutely love this episode. I, I, I think it was Nando V Movies who said, the consistent thing about What If is that you really don't know what you're going to get before you sit down. You do not know if an episode, like the first episode is just, the first Avenger again. The second episode, you know, has a lot of, like, Black Panther, both Guardians of the Galaxy volumes, and Infinity War are that episode's playground, and it has so much fun with all the different parts in, in yeah. And then this episode is seven but with you know yeah it's it's we really do not know what we're gonna get from episodes of this and he also he straight up said there are going to be entire episodes that like some people will just be like that didn't did not like that that was not for me that was not my kind of thing at all and I really, I'm really glad that they're taking chances. Like, I, I could definitely imagine, I don't, you know, I haven't looked for that many reactions beyond the YouTubers I'm subscribed to, honestly, and, and what they reference, but I could definitely imagine there's probably people who thought this episode was just unacceptable. You cannot do that with the MCU, and, you know, I, I understand that perspective, and... Yeah, I, I really love that they're they're going this far, that they actually have stories that are this like subversive. Like it it's hard to even imagine like the foundations of the MCU, almost all of them, die in this episode, and they have almost no screen time before they die. And just yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, I really, really love this episode. I really hope that they're going to keep having ideas as just bonkers as this one. It's, it's just Fury's Big Week by way of seven. Yeah, absolutely loved it. So that is it for this one. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.